Here we go. Episode number 34 of the Hardline Sports Talk. I am Michael Merlo. Along with me, I have John Michael Masiri. JM, how are you? Doing good as always. How are you? Wow. Look at that. I got I got a how are you back. I'm shocked. Okay. Um, I'm good. You know, uh, exciting weekend of football. You know, heading up, heading up to Boston to see some Mets, Red Sox. Life's good right now. I really can't complain. Are you good, though? I mean, you know, Giants lose a tough one on Thursday. Mets are basically I'm, out of it. Uh, the Mets, uh. that's done. The Giants really broke my heart. Yeah. Win a couple, win a couple games though. Why don't you get a nice sweep in Fenway? That that would help a little bit. Yeah, no, no problem. Just yeah, like you it. helped us out with the Phillies over over the uh, summer. Yeah, do it. Do us a favor. Yeah, no problem. Uh, we're not going to talk about the Mets later, but we will talk about the Yankees. <laughs> um, but I do want to start in the NFL. Um, the New York Jets lost a pretty tough game yesterday. Zach Wilson throws four interceptions. His first two throws were interceptions. A few of them were like, what are you doing? But listen, he's a young guy. I think the overreaction of, oh, we shouldn't have let Donald go needs to stop that enough of that. Right. Because it's the second game of his career. He's only played eight quarters yeah. and Donald has played eight quarters for the Panthers and he's looked good. Don't get me wrong, but like th- th- this overreaction needs to chill. Out. Right. I mean, are we supposed to act surprised that Sam Donald is now in Carolina in a much better situation? And we're comparing him to a kid who just came into the NFL uh, is 21 years old and is in a worse situation than Sam Donald and, we're supposed to act surprised that Sam's been out for him so far. So, yeah, I mean, that that's ridiculous. And, um, you know, I think the overreacting is, you know, you have to expect it. You always get it with the fans. It's, 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 in, our, it's in people's nature. Um, I'm personally not one of those people. Obviously, I want to see my quarterback do good. We were at the game on Sunday. It, we left early. It was unbearable to watch. It was, it was, I was getting annoyed. Um, you know, as oh, much yes, as you are. I was, we're supposed to be patient this year and everything. It is still frustrating when your team is a joke. Um, so yeah, definitely. Hopefully it's the worst year of the worst game of Zach Wilson's career, but, um, definitely he's going to make some rookie mistakes. Can't be overreacting. Um, definitely has some things to polish and get rid of, you know, the, the bad habits. And just to use as an example of why, you have to be so patient with these quarterbacks. I mean, people want to jump the gun and say, oh, he's he's awful. What a bust, this and that. Because I've, I've seen that. I see posts. I'm in that Jets Facebook group. People are already saying that. Idiots are saying that. Um, yes. And just to put an example, what do we do when we come on the show and we talk about the Giants? We talk about Daniel Jones. This is, this is his year. He needs to prove himself or else it's over. Daniel Jones is going to his third year of his career. People want to write off Zach Wilson's career two eight quarters, two games into his career, but we can still have an argument 24 games into, uh, I'm sorry, even more 32 games into Daniel Jones career and talk about, is this the guy or not? So pump the friggin' brakes. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, I can't say I'm shocked with the overreaction because, again, fan is short for fanatic. They're crazy. Like you said, Sam Darnold's in a great situation. Listen, I think coaching-wise, I think Darnold's in a great situation. I think Matt Rule is a good head coach. I, th- I think Joe Brady is going to be a good head coach somewhere. He's the offensive coordinator, and he's surrounded with pretty nice weapons. The offensive line's okay, not great, not terrible. So, I mean, when you, when you compare it to what even Wilson has now – or what Darnold had with the Jets his whole career, it is much better. Yeah. So to see Darnold, again, two games look pretty good, I'm not shocked. I don't think this guy is going to be a star. I, I think you could win with him, possibly. Right. Right. The, the book's the book's not out on him yet, though. So True. we're just going to have to see. We need to stay patient with Zach Wilson because – this is a new coaching staff. You know, this guy, Mike LaFleur has never been an offensive coordinator and Rob Sala has never been a head coach. Give it time. I think the problem is JM is that there was some buzz with this Jets team, not playoff buzz, but buzz where they're not going to be as bad as you think. 
They might win right. six, seven games and look better than people think. And then maybe next year they'll take that step to go to the postseason. Right. I think we may have rushed it. I, yeah, and possibly. Unfairly rushed it because yeah. they look, they don't look good. They really don't look good. Yeah. I mean, you might be right there. Um, I also think there is a possibility that this team, you know, gets a little better as the season goes on because of with all the, um, you know, the new coach, the new quarterback, new everything. So I think it still is possible that they, you know, rip off five to six wins. Um, but yeah, you're right. Uh, I think this roster is still not where it, nearly where it needs to be. Um, you obviously still have a, a young rookie quarterback. You can't be expecting to win a lot of games. And, and, you know, that's the difference with, like, Trevor Lawrence is struggling so far. Zach Olson struggling so far. Mac Jones isn't struggling much. But if you watch the Patriots, they don't really put Mac Jones in a position where he could be struggling. Like, he's in more, I don't want to say a game manager, but closer to a game manager role than those guys are because, you know, they have nothing to lose. They want to see – they know they're not making the playoffs of Jags and the Jets – they want to see their quarterback make plays. They want to see their quarterback make those mistakes to learn from those mistakes and not do them again and blossom as quarterbacks. But I think what you see with uh, the Patriots and Mac Jones, and I don't want to take anything from Mac Jones. He's played pretty well to start his career, but a lot of um, taking what the defense gives you, um, check, check downs, you know, heavy run games, stuff like that. So they're putting Mac Jones in a uh, – they're, they're putting Mac Jones in a position where he's not going to lose them the game. Kind of a thing. They're trying. They're trying to win games. Yeah, that that's what they're trying to do. Yeah, I I think Jones has looked, you know, okay. His pass rating looks really nice, but right. other than that, he's he's not slinging it down the field. He he did have a nice uh, little touch throw over the shoulder to um. I think it was Jacoby Myers yesterday. Right. He's a, he's an accurate passer. He he right. was in college. I don't think that's going to change in the NFL, but. This overreaction, is but killer. yeah, just going to the back to the Wilson thing and the overreacting. Like you, you get the same thing with the Mets. The way Jets fans are, and they just want to be so damn pessimistic with yep. everything. If Zach Wilson was lighting the league on fire, there would still be Jets fans that are saying like, "Oh, it's so early. This guy's awful," and whatever. And you know, that's with certain. Um, that, that might be correct in some sense in the way that they don't want to overreact, but in the opposite direction, they do want to overreact and say, this guy's horrible, bust, this and that. If you're on J Twitter or Facebook or whatever you're on and you're calling Zach Wilson a bust already, you're just a dumb person. You don't have a high IQ. You have a small brain. You're a troll. You're just a troll. Exactly. That's, that's just what it comes down to. And Zach Wilson might be a bust three years from now i don't know but calling him a bust right now with seeing two games into his career is an absolute joke of a take and i do not respect your opinion at all it's almost like you're rooting for it too at that point yeah you're a jets fan and you're like oh this guy sucks i was right, right about him we should because you know like because jets fans as crazy as it is jets fans feel comfort in being terrible and it's true it really is. They feel it's like, comfort it's being like, miserable. It's like, no, don't don't come with me here and and take the risk of investing yourself emotionally for, you know, there to be good things to happen. Instead, stay in your shell of misery and be comfortable with it. Just be like, oh yeah, the Jets, same old Jets, this and that, and and um, yeah, mis misery. That that's that's how some people want to want to be. And sure, I listen, I. We kind of share the same – it's almost like a, correl a direct correlation between Mets and Jeff fans. So I, I understand exactly yeah. what you're saying. Um, Aaron Jones is really just putting on a Monday Night Miracle for some people. He's got three touchdowns now. Four. He just He's scored another? He has 41 and a half points. The Monday Night game is almost – He over. always we'll has a game like a this. Bit. He always has a game like once a year where he'll put up like a 40-something point game. That's he's, what happens when you play in a high-powered offense like that. Yeah, but he's just feeding him. It's almost like Rodgers yeah. has him in Oh, he's a great he's running trying back to go to him. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Um, what else is there? Jets offensive line still doesn't look good. Uh, that's a massive problem. You're they not actually, see... you know, they didn't play bad, though. 
There were a couple of plays yesterday where nobody inside was blocking, where the pressure wasn't even around him. It no, was see, face. all right, so the one, Wilson's, I think it's his second pick or something, they ran a play action, and the uh, there was a blitzing linebacker who just came right through the middle. Um, the, nobody you know, touched the, him? Right in between the, uh, I think it was the center and the left side of the line were blocking, and then right in between the center and the right guard, there was just a huge hole. And there was no running back to uh, block the blitzing linebacker, and he just came through. So I don't know. I'd have to watch that again. I don't. I don't know if that was necessarily offensive line's fault. But when you look at the numbers um, of how many dropbacks and pressures Zach Wilson had, it, it was a m- bit much bigger improvement than Week One. And even you know the Jets had a couple nice run plays. Uh, Michael Carter broke off a couple nice runs. Ty Johnson broke off a nice run. Um, so they did play better. Still not great, but. I was uh, I was pleased with the way the offensive line played against such a great Patriots defense with Mackay back to net. I understand wanting to establish the run yesterday, but they were almost putting Wilson in like uh, they were put they were putting him in obvious third down passing situations. Right, which I I, I like they should have thrown the ball a little bit more on first and second down just to at least be there, you know, show them something different. It's already a, a very advanced defense and it's, it's not easy to play against. We know how Belichick is against rookie quarterbacks. So I don't know. I thought his offensive coordinator could help them out a little bit better. Um, I saw this on Twitter yesterday. I thought this was very interesting. Joe Douglas's 2020 draft class. You ready for this? Oh God. I, I think I saw this, but sure. Makai Becton's on the IR. He's the first round pick. The second round pick Denzel Mims is inactive. Ashton Davis, the third round pick, is on the IR. He was hurt last year too, correct? Yes. Davis. He played, but you know, not a lot of games. Jabari Zungaya. Jabari Zuniga, they cut him. Yeah, they cut him. He's on their practice squad. Lamichael Pirine, fourth round pick. He's inactive. James Morgan, fourth round pick. He's on the Panthers practice squad. Fourth round pick, Cam Clark. He's on the IR. Bryce Hall's your fifth round pick, and he's your starting corner, and uh, sixth round pick Brandon Mann on the IR. So that that draft class isn't looking good at all, yeah. especially the the Mims pick. The Mims pick looks terrible right now. Yeah, it does look terrible. Um, I mean, we know how good Becton is, but um, unfortunately, he's hurt. And hopefully that that you know that was one of the concerns when they drafted him with how big he was, his ability to stay healthy. So um, hopefully. He can do that for uh, the bulk of his career. But um, if you want to get even more depressed than that, um, or if I want to get even more depressed than that, you can uh, take a gander at the Jets' second round, not even just second round picks, just their second round receivers in the past like 10, 15 years. And it is, uh, it's one hell of a list. And hopefully Elijah Moore is going to like break that because I thought Denzel Mims was going to be able to do it. And now he's not even. He's literally a healthy scratch. So hopefully um, Elijah Moore can break that curse. But just a couple of names that come to mind. You got Denzel Mims. You got uh, Stephen Hill, which was a disaster. Oh. Devin Smith, guy from Ohio State, was compared to Deshaun Jackson. He's super fast. Yes. That was a disaster. Um, so, yeah, this the second round wide receivers. Have re- and then obviously Denzel Mims. Second round wide receivers have really not worked out for the Jets. I'll tell you that. And if they don't figure this out by, like, middle of the season. I saw something on Twitter a couple of days ago. If they don't figure this out, they, they might end up cutting them. Yeah. Which is crazy. I think by week eight or something, like they were saying, like, if they don't get this figured out by week eight, cut them. It's bizarre. So it really that, that's going to be and that's going to be something to watch. You know, I get if, if Mims isn't like us, we're not in the building. We're not the coaches. We're not at practice seeing what's going on, but. If Mims, the only reason why you're not playing him is because he doesn't really fit into the scheme that well because he doesn't know all the positions um, the best right now. You're not in a win-now scenario. Go play him in the position that he knows best and see if he can make a couple plays for you. I mean, he made a nice play in Carolina on that uh, uh, go route down the sideline. And... Why not go see him make a couple plays and maybe, you know, uh, you, you realize, oh, this guy's a little better than we thought. Or like, what do you have to lose? Instead, you're playing uh, Vincent Smith and Braxton Berrios and all these like, come on, 
Yeah, you, yeah, you're right. You're you're not in it. You're not competing for a playoff spot. You might as well just use use him when you can. Use him yeah. where he does actually fit. I, Jeff fans are really high on this guy. I wasn't out of, out of the draft, but I, I I thought he would work. Like I I thought it would work. I mean, I knew that there was a little bit of work to be done on him, but we were talking about him as a first round pick. Um, yes, you know, it's kind of the same thing with Elijah Moore. Uh, he was supposed to be like maybe a late first. Um, ended up going mid to late second of the Jets. They traded down. They still ended up getting him. And you kind of question like, why did this guy slide so much? You know, some receivers like T. Higgins and um, I don't even I, I don't remember if Michael Pittman went ahead of him, but some guys that got selected in front Lavisca Chenault got picked in front of him. Some guys, you know, they're getting picked in front of him, and you're like, why? Like in the draft boards and everything, they had Mims ranked higher, so. I don't know. Maybe teams knew something that the Jets didn't, or the Jets knew it and they took a fly on them. I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely be watching that situation. Um, I want to move on. I did a show today, and I was literally so all over the place. I couldn't even keep track in my brain. Like I was going from game to game to game, and I had to do it in one hour. So I'm going to try and keep this a little more structured. So I think we should go Sunday night football. Do you agree with me? Let's go Sunday Night Football. Uh, yeah, let's let's do it. Okay. So, Sunday Night Football. Ravens, Chiefs in Baltimore. It was a great game. Very exciting game. It started off with the Lamar Jackson pick six. And it kind of looked like the Chiefs were going to run away with it. The, the it, it, There was a point in that game where I was like, this, this could be a blowout. And it was after the Chiefs scored their second touchdown to make it 14-7. Mm-hmm. I was like, I think they're going to run away with this game. And they didn't. The Ravens kept fighting back, fighting back, and proved me wrong uh, completely. I thought they were going to win the whole time before the game. We were picking the game. I had the Chiefs. I 100% thought that the Chiefs were going to win this game by a touchdown or yeah. more. So I, I just need to give credit here to John Harbaugh, who has the cojones of uh, his cojones. His balls are huge. Seriously, yeah, like he has yeah. big time balls. Yeah, going all right, all right. Yeah, down. I, yep, we know about his balls. Take it easy. Um, <laughs> that's a nice, that's a nice clip right there. Um, yeah, he he does. Um, and you know, you know, Lamar Jackson's are, uh, are almost as big as him, if you ask me. Um, I mean, I think he proved himself last night that he's not just a running back and all the BS that people want to say and the trolls. Um, yeah, he's used a, play, to be he's one a of playmaker, those Lamar Jackson. He can show up in the big moments and, and make the plays for you and prove that last night. And, um, yeah, I agree. I mean, I love the Chiefs going into that game. I do. I am high on the Ravens this year. Obviously, I picked them to go to the Super Bowl. Um, hey, let's not forget last week you asked, can I have the Ravens Super Bowl pick back? Yeah. True. How you feel? How you feeling now? How you, how you feeling right now? I don't know. I'll, I'll just, I'll just stick with my pick in the beginning. Yeah. Um, nobody was letting you switch off of it. Um, and you know, Mahomes with his 11 and 0 in September, 35 touchdowns, the no picks, uh, ratio, like just crazy. And, and you just figured that the chiefs were going to, you know, it was going to be a decently good game, but the chiefs were going to end up winning by, like you said, like a touchdown or something. And um, that's not what happened. I mean, I think we both in our picks had Chiefs minus three and a half, correct? Yes. Yeah. So I was, um, all, I was all over. I was all over the Chiefs. I you mean, know, and I was giving that pick out like you yeah. wouldn't believe. As much as we are high on the, uh, we want to talk about the Ravens and how well they played. Um, something I feel like isn't going to talked about that much is Clyde Edwards Alaire. Like, I feel like it's just weird with this guy. Some people were picking him to have this like, LaShawn McCoy-esque season because they were comparing him to LaShawn McCoy um, when he played for Andy Reid in Philadelphia and saying he's going to have a LaShawn McCoy-type season and they're really going to unleash him this year. He's going to have this great year Never saw and that. become this complete running back. And he had 46 rushing yards yesterday, fumbled um, to give the Ravens the ball, which ultimately was the reason why the, fumbled Ravens, the game away. Ravens ended up winning. And, um, yeah, this guy's just really – not that great of a running back, if you ask me, from what I see. And, they, and I don't think they they really trust him that much because they don't give him the ball that much. I think he's been overrated since he's been in the NFL just because of the offense he's in. Yeah. It's crazy to me because he's playing in a very pass-first offense. I was talking to one of our friends last night, and he said the Chiefs should just throw the ball 80 times because yeah. – 
80 times a game because what's the point? The, mm-hmm. the guy is – Mahomes is so, so good. He can make any play you want. So, yeah, I don't – I don't I never bought the hype with uh, Edward Jolaire. I'm still not buying it, although I did draft him pretty high in one of my fantasy leagues last year. Oh, but, you know, like second round ish. So, you see, uh, you see Jackson Mahomes. Yeah, he was pouring water on some yeah. uh, Raven fans. Look that at was him. pretty funny. I ain't gonna lie. He's a little salty. Yeah, he, a little bit. He posted bit. a TikTok. He posted a TikTok last night. And he actually had like a nice comment. It, it was funny. I was laughing. He was like, put these birds back in their cages. Wow. And I was like, okay. He didn't get it because the Ravens playing the Ravens. Yeah. Very funny. He, he's funny, though. Yeah. But. Kind of, I we didn't really like explain why John Harbaugh has these big balls, and that's because um he went for it on fourth down, and right. if he if he doesn't go for it on fourth down, it was like fourth and two from their own like forty five, with a minute to go. Chiefs had no more timeouts. The Ravens only had one more timeout, and if he doesn't go for it there, and he gives the ball back to Patrick Mahomes, no matter where the ball is, the chances that. Mahomes goes down and, and gets them to at least field goal range with Harris Bucker. They're, they're going to win the game. So oh, yeah. Harbaugh had one decision to make that was to go for it. It was the only decision and good for him. I love John Harbaugh. And I listened to his post game uh, when he was in the locker room, his little speech to his team, or at least what the, they showed the media and, you know, with that, the cursing and <laughs> he, He's just, he's the man. I love him. I like his brother too, but right. I love him. Right. Yeah. And, uh, um, good for them. And good for, good for Lamar. That That's a, yes, big, that is really, that's a Lamar. monkey off Lamar's back, uh, yeah. back right there. That is big time. Yeah. Um, that's the correct term, right? Yes. Monkey off the back. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Really, man. really good decision for Harbaugh there. Risky decision. Uh, it was cool seeing it live. I noticed that. I, I, I don't know if a lot of people did notice it, but I remember just, I just read his li- lips live there. He was like, you want to go for this? And, I was, and Lamar was like, obviously, he said yes. So that was really cool to see. Um, yes. And they just needed a yard. And I'm surprised. the He put a lot of trust in his offensive line there because sometimes, you know, you'll see people run up to the line and either they'll do a hard count or they'll do a QB sneak. But that was, you know, there, there was that at the shotgun. And it was just a QB power. And Lamar kind of just bounced around, found the hole. And got a couple yards, um, but yeah, the John John Harbaugh definitely um, with a risky move, uh, and it paid off. And I think that's what happens with good coaching. You know, those are two really good coaches facing off against each other last night, and that just proves to you that, um, you know, maybe the Chiefs were the favorite, but good coaching uh, can win you games. And I the offensive line for the offensive line for the Ravens, which didn't play well week um week one in yeah. las vegas stepped up yesterday yep i also did. think it's a um the Mon- uh, sunday night excuse me i i also think it's a combination of that chief's defense being a massive problem yes 467 total yards that is not good i agree yeah that that chief's defense um it, it's got a lot of holes in it i mean they have some some good players obviously in tyron matthew and um frank clark but yeah it's 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 not the best it's been and you know it's never been like that in Kansas City they've never had a fantastic defense but it's always been like good enough to get by but that could really this end up isn't being, good enough to get that could end up being this isn't good enough to get by I mean they probably should have lost that game against Cleveland I think Baker kind of gave that away or, or or whatever but the Browns were marching down the field of them I mean at some point they were getting eight nine yards a clip just on the on the ground they beat them for three quarters, the Browns, yeah. on, uh, last Sunday, 100%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was, like you said, you know, Mahomes made some plays deep downfield and Baker handed them a game. Right. You know, it was very impressive by the Chiefs to, uh, I mean, by the Ravens to limit Tyreek Hill the way they did. I mean, he only had about three catches for 15, 14 yards or something like that, which is yeah, really incredible. It was Tyreek Hill. He kind of has he, – he has a few of those games, though. He's kind of – he's not, like, inconsistent, but he'll have, like, one of those games where he does nothing. Or co- I've yeah. never ha- – I haven't had him in fantasy Rare. a lot. You've had him in fantasy. I feel yeah. like he's had a couple of these games. No, I had him in fantasy last year. I mean, he's a fantastic receiver, and he, he puts up crazy numbers. But, yeah, he's definitely a, a little on the streaky side just because that's the kind of player he is. He's, like, a big shot player, you know, uh, run after catch guy. So, 
Yeah, he uh, he he had the obviously he had that fifty eight point game against the Bucks last year, two hundred fifty yards and three touchdowns, which was insane. But yeah, he's gonna have those. Uh, I don't know about this. I mean, that was pretty drastic. I mean, I'm thinking he's gonna have more of those four for fifty, four for sixty games, not three for Anything fifteen. That's insane. You know, uh, Patrick Mahomes has more interceptions than Daniel Jones this year. Uh, um. Anyway, uh, that interception was not good. I, I mean, he's just trying to do too much there, uh, Patrick Mahomes. He right. just kind of like flung the ball. He's getting sacked. Take the sack, Pat. Come on, enough. I'm really glad that I have this phone charger. That um, this back. It's my my backup phone charger right now because my other one broke, and uh, it's not long enough to get to my desk. So I had to check my phone and like kneel over and do my best, uh, like gym. Not long move, enough. Get real flex. Mm, okay. Um, you, you with all these, uh, funny jokes tonight, you're on a roll. I'm I'm shock jock John today. What can I say? Balls. Listen, I'm a shock jock. Anyway, <laughs> what, what, what do I want to talk about? I was told I know, you said today, you to be real structured and you know, I was, I was told today I say anyway, way too often. Um, so you I, say I gotta... anyway, a lot, you say, uh, you say a lot of things on the show. Obviously there's the, here we go, but that's kind of your trademark, but the, yeah, uh, I'm making a t-shirt about myself. It's here we go. The whole, uh, other side of town thing. That's a phrase you use a lot. When we're talking okay. About but that team. makes sense. Like yeah, that but, makes you know, sense. It's a bit over the top. Even with the Giants and the Jets, though, it doesn't really make sense because they win. I don't say it with. I don't. No, you did. You said that. You were like, "Oh, let's go over the other team in town or other side of town." Whatever he said. Well, if I say the other team in town, then that's yeah. Well, that's different. No, but you said the other side of town. They play in the same town. They do. They play in the same crappy stadium. I don't remember ever saying it. Swamplands in the middle of New Jersey. It's disgusting. I actually wanted to put a bullet through my head sitting in that traffic yesterday. Hold on. I am never driving to that stadium again. I'm taking the train every single time. Because you know what? you got to be an idiot not to be able to take the train. People yeah. are like, oh, it's so difficult to take the train. You just you go to Penn Station. You go buy another ticket at the trans, New yeah. Jersey Transit. You know what? You're right. And I, I am an idiot. You're right. Because I, I live in freaking Queens, and I could just easily do that. I don't have to pay $45 for parking, park a mile away from the stadium, then – leave the stadium first of all when you get there you have to sit online for 20 minutes depending on what time you get there 20 minutes um to park find a parking spot in guam like i just said and then when you leave the game even though we left early yesterday i guess everybody left early or whatever every every, a lot of people left early there were videos of people just flooding out of that stadium and it's supposed to no traffic right it's supposed to take about 40 minutes to get back to my house um, from MetLife Stadium. Took an hour and 40 minutes. So, I mean, bumper to – but you were in it. Bumper to bumper, standstill traffic for an hour and 40 minutes. Awful. It took me two hours and 20 minutes to get home. Yeah. That's – It's terrible. Oh, my God. Two hours and 20 minutes, you should be like, uh, you know, in the Hamptons. Or almost a freaking Montauk at that point. Exactly. So yeah, I'm going. I'm going to the Giants game on Sunday. Train, hundred percent. I don't care. And it's listen. It's almost a two hour train ride. It, it, honestly, because you got to stop. You got to get off uh, once or twice. I don't care. It's better yeah. than sitting sitting in traffic. It's way better. Definitely. Well, way what about better. that right. train ride out of MetLife? Is that like very uncomfortable? Is there like a million people on one train? Yes. Uh, so. Oh, no, no, actually, no, it's not when you get. So after MetLife, you got to go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So you got to stop somewhere a- after MetLife to get back to Penn Station. Yeah, I'm forgetting what that track is called. That's uncomfortable. New because Jersey Transit. We, yes, it's still the Jersey Transit to get back to Penn Station because we left our friend Dennis in New Jersey because he oh, couldn't right. fit on the train. Yeah. So, and I was literally like this. It was right before the pandemic, too. I'm literally up against. I, I can't move my arms. I'm up against the guy. Like if he turned his head, me and this random guy were making out. Oh, yeah, you'd be into that. You sure you yeah, don't want so, that to happen? No, I mean he he was asking me. He was like, at least take me out to dinner first, you know, because <laughs> how close we were. I was like, Pause. Uh. So it was it was an interesting train ride, though. 
but it's fine. I mean, just cry about it. It's better than sitting in traffic. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on from train talk. Um, all right. I do want to talk about the Cowboys and the Chargers because, you know, whether or not the Chargers. No, say it. Say it. What? Who was right? Who was right? I got crushed. Yep. I got crushed with I the was right. Chargers yesterday. Yep. Um, listen, the Chargers lost themselves the game because <sighs> they made a lot of mistakes, but they also were not helped out by the referees. The Chargers have some of the worst luck in all of football. There we go. They, they either they come on, JM. You what? really what was really problem? all those bad calls against the Chargers all day? That sack call on Herbert? Are you kidding me? That's not a sack. Please. Weeping. That is not a sack. He was not down. Let him make a play for crying out loud. You're blowing a whistle way too early. Why don't you get Jerry Jones as you know what out of your mouth? Oh okay. my God. Enough of that. I mean, the boys, that's a great one for the Cowboys. Great one for Dak. I mean, Dak didn't even yeah, play well him. at all. Thanks for the seven screw points, him. Dak. Yeah, Tony uh, Pollard, RB1. Um, Yeah, that's uh, – how On a scale from one to ten, because you have Zeke in a couple of fantasy leagues, how worried are you on a scale from one to ten? I'd say I'm like a five. A five. I'm like a five. Um, okay. You know, in, in in the two in two of the leagues out of three, I'm probably like a five or a six, and then in the other one, I'm probably like a, a four because I also How have Tony Pollard, have, so man. at least that's like a, a fallback. I'm in four leagues. I have Zeke in three. Oof. Um, yeah, I'm all in on Zeke, and then the other one I got Derrick Henry, which was very nice. But yeah. um, he yeah, me daily I mean fantasy. Pollard did get a lot of snaps. And a lot of touches, but um, you could still tell Zeke is the number one guy. I mean, the Pollard yeah. touchdown, Zeke was actually on the field for that, but it was a two running back set, and they did a bit of like an end around where they faked it to Zeke and, and gave it to Pollard. Um, so, no, I don't think Tony Pollard's going to be ripping off 100 yards and a touchdown the rest of the year every game. I think Zeke's going to definitely lead the team in rushing and lead all running backs and receiving yards. So, um, do I think Tony Pollard has a bit of a larger role than we anticipated going into this season? Yes. Um, but I think they'll, they'll be just, you know, Zeke will be just fine with that. I think he can why don't still you, be uh, on RB1 easily. Why don't you just trade for Tony Pollard? Yeah, I could do that. No, nah, in, the, in the one that I have Zeke and Tony Pollard in, I was like, you know, at one point I might just have to play both of them. Just yeah, see what happens. But, uh, nah, Sony Michelle, I actually have. And Daryl Henderson's got a little injury now, so uh, that might be a nice little little start next week. Yeah, Sonny Michelle, 13 for 20, a touchdown. Um, <laughs> yeah, I thought the Cowboys played okay. They right. didn't play great. Uh, but, listen, a, a win's a win. Mike McCarthy trying to lose some games here with uh, clock management. He's just so good. He's great. That's really sarcastic. Oh, That's yeah, really sarcastic. Yeah, and you really know, Greg, happy. Greg Zerline, I'm so glad you brought that up. Greg Zerline bailed out Mike McCarthy. Yeah. Did you not? Okay. They had the ball with like 17 seconds left, and it was third down, and they still had a timeout. So they decided, let's let the clock tick down to four seconds or whatever it was, and then let's call a timeout and let's kick the ball on third down. Why would you not just get to like get one more play and throw the ball in the middle of the field, try and get a couple more yards, and then you could call your timeout or even you, run it? You have the free or run it exactly. You have the freedom to do whatever you want because you have that timeout and you had plenty of time to do it. But Mike McCarthy, for whatever reason, decided and don't don't tell me the oh, well, there's a possibility they could throw the pick or there's a possibility they could fumble. I'll take that risk when I'm trying to kick a 56 yard field goal to win the game. Like I'll take the risk. And I think my players are smart enough to not turn the ball over and trying to get an extra 10 yards or five yards. I disagree with you. I wouldn't have thrown it. I understand you wanted to get an extra play. So you run the ball. That's fine. I'm all for that. I wouldn't have thrown the ball there. I'm with him. I don't, I don't see why not. I mean, you know, they, they got down the field by throwing the ball. And I think, Dak smart enough to where he could just throw it away if nothing's open, or you just do a quick little, you know, five yard, ten yard route, whatever, and and pick up a couple more yards, even a screen pass, something. 
You could run the ball. Pass or run. Pass or run. The fact that he didn't um, run a play there is just ridiculous. And he's getting – it's it's not a story because, you know, they ended up winning. Yeah. Zerline made the, the kick, which was no chip shot. That was very impressive for Greg Zerline. And um, I think if Greg, Greg Zerline, Zerline, if Greg Zerline misses that kick and the Chargers win an OT, that, that's a brutal, brutal decision by Mike McCarthy. How are we feeling about Justin Herbert? I thought he played all right. Um, a couple of picks yeah. were not so good. Herbert's the man. That's he's it. he's pretty scary. He is. He's gonna be he's, uh he's gonna be around for a long time. And I can't wait problems. for uh him to, you know, rattle Mahomes feathers a little bit in that division. Well, they play each other this week. Right. Week three. And, and who would have thought, you know, through two weeks, the Chargers and the Chiefs are in third and fourth. And the two teams in front of him are undefeated. Yeah. Only undefeated teams in the AFC. Crazy. Crazy talk. Uh, What else do I got here? Um, Eckler played all right. I think the Chargers... uh, Would it shock me if the Chargers, like, can beat up on the Chiefs a little bit? No, because of that defense. Like, I think it's going to be a shootout. I don't think they're there yet, though. No, me neither. I don't think they'll be able to, you know, put a, a 40 spot on the Chiefs defense. I don't think it's like that. It'll be a shootout. You know, Anthony Lynn's the coordinator for the Lions now. I noticed that in Monday Night Football tonight. They yeah, I, I noticed that too. Um, yeah, don't, don't see the fit there. I, I don't see Anthony Lynn as a fit anywhere. He's not a very good coach, if you haven't noticed. Uh, no, but I think, you know, he could be a good coordinator. Like, Todd Bowles wasn't a great coach, and now he's the best defensive coordinator in the NFL, basically. So, Could we uh, talk about my Giants for a minute? Sure. I got this, like, tingly feeling in my body about my quarterback, Daniel Jones. Like, I'm tearing up. You're like, tearing I'm watching up? These, like, I'm watching these highlights of him the other day, man. He looked good. I mean, he looked good. No Daniel Jones highlight should make you tear up. Maybe in like was... a, oh my God, this is so hard to watch way. <laughs> what is wrong I with feel... you? You with your feelings. Uh, oh, I got a feeling. You just said uh, last week, I got a feeling the Giants are going to win this game against Washington. How'd that work out? I should have won. Should have won by 40. Um I feel good about my quarterback. Um, I'm excited. I'm so I am so excited to go to this game on Sunday. Watch him against the Falcons. He should put up another big time performance. I think he has the second highest pass rating in all of football, or it was the second highest pass rating last week. I don't know though, but it's like 95. He's the man. Daniel Jones, the man. I want him to work out so badly. Like I've never wanted another player to work out on one of my teams more than I want Daniel Jones to work out here. Like I want him to be the guy so badly. I can't believe you're shaking your head. I can't believe you just said I got teared up. You got a tingly feeling watching Daniel Uh, Jones. The tear up. Did you like knock your funny bone or something? When you got a tingly feeling. The tear, the tearing up part was a slight overreaction, but the tingly, I'm watching him. I'm like, Oh my God, that looks great. Like I will tingly feel him like goosebumps. Like, wow, maybe he's the guy. We'll see though. Do it against another team. That's not the Washington football team. Yeah. But I'm um, just quick, a uh, little, uh, you know, it, it's always something with one of my team's drama. Um, Kenny Galladay was seen screaming on the sideline at somebody. Thankfully it wasn't at the quarterback, Daniel Jones. It was just at his coach. So I don't know how, how you make, you know, I don't know how, People can make that swing that to be a good thing, but spin that. That's the word I was looking All for. Right, spin well, that into a good thing. He was screaming at Jason Garrett. Oh, um, very good. Okay. Thank God. And he called him, he called him worried. JG and not Coach Garrett. Yeah, uh, was, what else? I was, re- I was really worried. By the way, just pump the brakes with this whole Daniel Jones uh, passer rating thing. First of all, um, I don't know where you got. He's like second in the league in pass rating. He has a 96 pass rating, which is like, 17th right now um behind oh then i guess it was 
guys like Taylor Heineke, uh, Mac Jones, Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor is 122 passer rating. That's insane. Actually. Yeah. Uh, who needs Look Deshaun Watson when you got Tyrod Taylor? Oh, it wasn't passer rating. That's my bad. That's on me. Do you want to know what it is? No. <laughs> I was driving when I saw it. Really Passing know. grades among NFL quarterbacks per PFF. Number one, Tom Brady, 91.8. Oh, yeah. Number pro two, focus. Daniel Jones. Let's go. Let's yeah, pro go. football focus. All reliable, baby. Daniel Jones. Let's uh, go. The boy. Uh, what else how about you, boy, Canarius? Saquon, playing beer pong and, you know, living it up at Penn State, baby. Listen, listen, listen. Don't get me started. Don't get me started about Mr. Overrated, Mr. Number two overall pick, waste of pick, going to be waste of money, going to be a fireable offense for people that drafted him. Yes. Okay, a fireable offense. The people that said, let's draft a running back and number two should be arrested. That's how oh, yeah. that is. That is terrible. That is mm-hmm. garbage. This guy can't run like he has in years. Is sitting here playing beer pong with 19-year-olds. He's married with a with, with a kid. Why well, doesn't he grow up a little bit, okay? Instead of being at Penn State watching a college football game, you should be rehabbing your knee because you're clearly not healthy. Enough of you, Saquon. Enough. And his white his white shirt for the white out. Got lucky and won the game too, Penn State. Go scratch. They can all go all right. scratch. All right. That pissed me. No, it pissed me off. He's playing beer pong with a 19-year-old. He's not ready to go. He can't run. You act like the guy's 40 years old. Was he 24, 25? If Saquon would have ripped off like 120 yards in a touchdown and the Giants win, he can do whatever the hell he wants, yeah, in my all opinion. Right. All right. Okay, he'd go flip cars at Penn State. Like, yeah. Well, maybe you know, if he didn't have a bunch of morons blocking for him, I'm sure he might, you know, get a little closer to that 120 yards. Yeah, I mean, you might be right. Um, <laughs> it was I saw this film play. People were talking about how uh, Joe Judge and Jason Garrett got conservative on that uh, after they picked Heineke off with the Bradbury. Apparently, they ran a trap play, and Saquon should have had, like, a first down, and he just completely missed the hole. Oh, good. Like, what uh, what, what happens if – what happens if Joe Judge, uh, you know, goes four and thirteen this year? I don't want to talk about it. Um, okay, I'm going to tell you this. I was listening to Mike Francesa and Chris Russo a couple weeks ago, and this is like, I guess, from like somebody they know. They said that Bill Belichick's gift to the Maras was Joe Judge. So the Giants wanted Josh McDaniels. Like that was rumored. That was big time. They wanted him. Uh, four years ago, and then they really wanted him when they hired Judge. And Belichick went to Mara and said, you don't want McDaniels, you want Judge. And they said, interview Judge. And he, they gave him permission to interview Judge. They interviewed Judge. He got hired. So so uh, no matter what happens, Judge is going to be the head coach this year. I'm confident in that. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if they would – Go to the extreme to fire him after two years. And, you know, the Giants might end up getting eight wins this year or nine wins and whatever. And uh, we know Judge is the guy. But I uh, like getting into these little, you know, what ifs. It's fun. You don't. Do it with the quarterback, not my head coach. He's dying. All right. Um, you get that tingly feeling about Joe Judge? You get I would one, run through a brick wall for Joe one Judge. One eye starts I would, tearing up for Judge, the other for Daniel Jones? Or I would do anything for Joe Judge. Coach Joe Judge can come into my house right now and say, run through a wall, and I would do it. Okay. I say it with a straight face, I would do it. Mm. Motivates the hell out of me. Nick Gates versus the world. Nick Gates walking after two days of his ankle being the other way. <laughs> the vibes are fine, okay, with the New York Giants. We're going to steamroll the Atlanta Falcons, and then we're going to get back on I track. hope so. I certainly hope you will. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Let's let's take a break. We didn't get to any of the, everything, but um, did, did the Packers win yet? The Packers are all, there's like a minute left. They're about to win. Oh, great. Aaron okay. Jones Packers off win. like 41 fantasy points, four touchdowns. The game's over, you clown. You know, this dude, Eli and Peyton, I was, I was watching that broadcast. I like it. Yeah, Peyton's backpack, and I got to say, this dude, Eli's just oh. sitting there like with that dumb look on his face. You know um, what? Enough of you and Eli, okay? Like, you clearly don't like the guy for whatever reason. Enough. Yeah. Eli is the man. He's funny as hell. Yeah, not all of it. 
He's funny as hell. Yeah, we don't have to go there. Up, oh, that's a fantasy W for me. Thank you oh, very much. Great. I'm two and zero, oh. and I'm zero oh and two in our other league. So that's good. Oh, good. Uh, all right, let's take a break. We didn't get to all the football, but there's too much, you know. Yeah. And I got to be up at six o'clock. Oh, so okay. let's take a quick break. Let's talk uh, some Yankees playoff hopes and the Mets front office search. I want to talk about that when we get back. Here we go, episode 34. We are back. Uh, let's get into some baseball here. The New York Yankees are pushing toward a – they're in the middle of a playoff push. They're trying to get in. They are half a game back now with the Blue Jays' loss and the Yankees' win. So, um, listen, they're still fighting. Um, Yankee fans are being a little pessimistic here, including yourself. You didn't think they deserve it. You don't think they sh- they will get in. I'm still on the side they're going to get in, but but we'll see. Uh, the blue, the Red Sox are ahead of them by how many games? Two, um, two and a half or two? It was uh, two, uh, two. Uh, I don't know. Before today's games, I believe it was two and a half. So they're so the Yankees are down two from the wild, number one wild card spot and a half ga- uh, half game behind the Blue Jays. So listen, they're right there. Um, the thing with the Yankees is they're going to have to play both of, all those teams. They're going to have to play the Red Sox. Then they're going to play Toronto, and then they're going to play Tampa to end the year, three game series each. So that's going to be that. That's not easy to end the right. season there. Well, that's what it comes down to. I mean, they got to take care of business in in this uh, Rangers series. Um, you know, you have to at least take two out of three. You really have to sweep, but you could afford taking two out of three. But that means. You're going to – it all comes down to you're going to have to beat the Red Sox. You're going to have to beat the Blue Jays when you face them. And they're going to hit that slate of games after this um, where they they can't have a bad stretch anymore. They have this nine-game stretch, three against Boston, three against Toronto, and three against Tampa. Um, And those games against Boston and Toronto are extremely important. Obviously, they're chasing them in the wild card standings. And, yeah, there's a reason why, you know, you got to – I feel pessimistic because – this team has just been so up and down the entire season. And, and in the month of September, they have not been playing their best baseball at all. And um, you just kind of feel like they don't really even deserve to make it. They just got absolutely shellacked by the uh, Cleveland Indians the past two games. I mean, a run differential of 22 to four in those oh, last two games of the series. Um, so... Yeah, Garrett Cole's pitching the Friday night game against Boston, the first game of the series. So hopefully um they win that game. And yeah, this is uh this this has been a roller coaster. This is they always say that you know the season's a roller coaster. Uh the baseball season, well, well, the Yankees has been Space Mountain or King King the Kong or whatever the biggest freaking roller coaster in the world is what the Yankees season has been. I mean, going from terrible to amazing to back to terrible to amazing um so yeah yeah i will see a little little, little, little tired a little tired sevy back did he pitch tonight sevy back um no that's a great question i don't i don't believe he pitched um could be wrong no no he did not be back sevy back coming out of the bullpen Yes, he is coming out of the bullpen. And, you know, I, I, got, a, I got a couple things to get off my chest here with the Yankees. Oh, yeah, the no, first, please take it. The first thing I want to talk about, I've been the biggest supporter for Gary Sanchez, his, his entire career with the Yankees. I mean, you, the, the, you see the talent uh, offensively and see the way, what the power and how good this guy can be. I think I'm done. I think the Gary Sanchez experiment is over. I think you move on this off season. Um, if you want to keep him for one more year, I get it. Cause he's going to be a free agent after next year. You let him walk in free agency, whatever. Uh, I'm, I'm at peace with letting Gary Sanchez go. The bat does not make up for the defense anymore. He's batting around 210. Um, he is, his OPS is, I believe seven fifties around there. Um, and the, the, we know about the defense, uh, the whole one knee catching thing. They've tried that. Uh, and, and the defense hasn't been awful. Uh, it hasn't been good, but it hasn't been terrible. Um, but I, I'm, I think I'm done with Gary, and I think they need to move on. Um, and, yeah, that, that, that's, my, that's my beef with uh, 
what the Yankees got going on right now and, and what I need to get off my chest. I think I'm done. That's your boy. I'm surprised. It's yeah. A sad day. It is. Um, and it's, it's bad because I think Gary always got a bad rap and it's kind of why I was, and still am, um, so even though I want him gone, I still wish the guy all the best, but I think he always got a bad rap and I felt bad for him and, and people questioned his work ethic. And, um, there's no doubt that I think he's one of the hardest working guys on the team. Literally. I mean, the amount of things that that guy's tried and, you know, working with the coaching staff, trying to improve his defense. And I think it got to him. I think, you know, over his career, it just got to him, and that's why the numbers have dipped offensively, and he ju- he just kind of worked himself too much, um, and I think the pressure got to him. So I'm done. That's that's it with Gary. You're out on El Gary. Um, did you see Susan Waldman last yes yesterday Saturday well, about, Sunday afternoon about them booing Cole? Yeah, she so she basically said like what are you people doing or something like that? Like mm-hmm. very like nasty toward the fans. Listen, I'm a booer. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a booer. I, I boo my own players. I'll boo other people's players. I don't care. It's my right. I'm a fan. And she's like getting on these people, getting on the Yankee fans for, for booing uh, Garrett Cole. Meanwhile, there was, there's a clip of her going around that she was absolutely killing Javi Baez and, Lindor for booing their fans so she's basically contradicting herself because they're booing the fans back and you know she's telling them not to boo like it doesn't make sense uh I kind of get what you're saying but um I think she's also saying like why are I think booing in general is just stupid but whatever I get what you're saying you know that you're not um, a booer I'm not a booer at all, actually. I agree with Susan Waldman. I think it was ridiculous that they're booing oh, freaking soft. Garrett so Cole. Soft. How are we soft? You're booing Garrett Cole, a guy who's been their best starter the entire season, um, who the Yankees have not given the best run support for. They've been a little better lately, but um, has definitely put the team in positions to win. He's come up in big, big games numerous times this year. And you're booing the guy off the field because he's having one bad start. Now, I get it. It's not the best time to have a bad start, but the guy's going to have a bad start. There's no reason to boo Garrett Cole. I mean, that's just ridiculous. And that's the, that's the, oh, uh, Vinny from Staten Island, or, uh, hey, it's, uh, it's Frank. I've been watching the Yankees since 1957, and uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, if, if George Steinbrenner was around, those idiots, those are the people who are booing Garrett Cole, not the guys who keep track and, and keep up with the team all the time. It's just the, the morons who come to the stadium once a year. And if the Yankees are losing, they, they like to boo and talk about if George was around and, uh, you know, Mickey Mantle had seven home runs in a game one time and, and blah, blah, blah. It's those Hey, boring. listen, my pitcher's not having his day, no matter who it is. Uh, offensive player goes off and forward with the golden sombrero. So DeGrom, I'm booing. DeGrom goes out, goes four innings, gives up six earned runs. You're getting up and you're booing him off the field. I mean that's never happened. So you're not. Yeah. Even, okay. I can't even. No, you're envision a fraud. That you can't happening. say that. You can't say that. I can't not... even envision that happening. Okay. Like I right. can't even He's like never put had a myself bad in that spot. Before, DeGrom. Yeah, of course. Um. Yes. If it's in a big spot. Yes, I'm booing him. No, I'm you're booing not. Him off the no, I, yes, I am. No, you're 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 full of crap. There's no way you're I would boo him. Off, I'm a booer. I am a big time booer. I believe in it. I take pride in it that I am an a-hole and I boo my own players off the field. I am proud of it. I would, if DeGrom comes up in a game that the, the Mets need to win, it's that's just the team ignorant. they should beat. You're, what? you're, you're, you're embracing your ignorance by booing. Yeah. Booing Jacob. Sorry. I, I pay a lot of money to go see them play. They make right. a lot of money. Oh, boo yeah. DeGrom. You with your, your seven war. Oh, boo. You had one yeah. bad start. Oh, get off the field. Yep, I would, I would boo. That that's me. But anyway, the Gar- I, Garrett Cole got helped out with his Cy Young chances today. Robbie Ray, Robbie Tight Pants Ray didn't have such a great start. It wasn't like awful, but he didn't go more than five innings. So um, AL AL Cy Young race still wide open, just like the AL Wild Card race. Yeah, and a Wild Card. How about the St. Louis Cardinals? Jesus Christ! Let's go Cards, baby! Come on, yeah. I'm rooting for them. I hope what? they get in. Yeah, I'm rooting for them. Oh, no, Phillies? 
Yeah, yeah, I'm rooting for the Phillies. How about that outburst by uh, Machado and Tatis? That was great. That I was love cool. that. I love all the Padre slander we could possibly get. They are the Padres have been one of the worst teams in baseball in the second in, in like the past two months. They're like 10 and 24, or something like that, over the last 34 games. Yeah, they're two and eight right now over the last 10. Cardinals are on Jace a Tangler. streak. Jace Tangler is about to be on the unemployment list. Yeah. He's gone. You think? Yeah, I know. I know he's gone. Oh, you I got know. it on good okay. so I, I got it on good sources that he's gone. Oh yeah, what are your um, sources? I know. That's all. My oh, brain. WHPC um, got sources now. WHPC has got sources. I, I just got a call. Um I actually just read a um an article. I actually didn't finish it, but the title is Luis Rojas is going to be fired at the end of the year, which is just music to my ears. Yeah, I would hope so. I'm getting nervous that it's not going to happen. I was starting to get nervous that it wasn't going to happen. I have I got the same thing with Gase. I mean, the Gase was a little more obvious and talked about. Oh, but... it's so much more obvious because there are people within baseball, and I was reading an article on The Athletic on Friday night that basically said a lot of people believe that Luis Rojas will be fired from the Mets and move on to another team and become a big-time manager. Right. So, and, and he apparently has the backing of Sandy Alderson. Oof. But not of Steve Cohen. And Cohen wants to hire a president of baseball operations, which that guy will want to hire as own manager. And it might be Billy Bean, which I would absolutely love, especially if he can bring me Bob Melvin. See, the Billy Bean thing, I like it. And Bob Melvin is really nice, too. Um, the only thing that's a little strange to me is... You know, Billy Bean's a, a guy who's used to working. You know, everybody saw Moneyball, um, and we know how the Oakland oh, Athletics yeah. operate with a tight budget and learning how to stay, you know, keep keeping the salaries low and everything like that. So I'm interested to see if he does end up with the Mets, how he adjusts with having much more uh, flexibility financially and being able to spend a lot more dollars, see how he kind of handles that. You know what? I, I was thinking about that the other day, too. It, let me just hear me out. You don't think Billy Bean's sitting there with like his people or whatever and saying, I, man, I wish we had the money to go get this guy because this guy fits our system, fits how we want to build it with his analytics people, whoever he's with trying to figure out who they should go get. Like, do you think, of course they wanted to bring back Marcus Simeon for a couple yeah. more million dollars. who just couldn't afford it. Right. So like, I understand the argument, but Billy Bean's going to be working, you know, still with his people. I, I don't think he should, you know, go off track of how he builds a team. He should build a team the same way. Just you have more money to spend. So don't yeah. go cra- like, don't go crazy. He's not, he's a really smart guy. He actually um, does like um, presentations or like Ted talks for um, businesses on how really? to work m- more efficiently with less. Yeah. And he, cool. he also spoke to, um, he spoke to uh, Steve Cohen a few years ago in his point 72 uh, just, you know, explaining that they have a relationship, obviously Sandy Alderson and Billy Bean have a relationship. And according to John Heyman, he's the favorite to get it. The Mets want him, And if he wants to leave, it's his job. Wow. Yeah. And you really think Melvin will leave with him too? Uh, I think the A's are going to be more willing to do it because I think they're going to want to shed more salary salary. And I don't think they want to pay those guys anymore. Jeez. That's really, really poverty. And um, Billy Bean's going to want to get out of there, too, because of the stadium situation. Yeah. Like, wh- Why would he want to stay for that? Yeah. You know, it's really, the stadium situation is just – I mean, that it's place terrible. was supposed to be a football stadium in the first place. Now the football team's gone. The Raiders are in Las Vegas. So there's no football team playing there, and you're a baseball team playing there, and it's just an absolute shambles. Um, just, it's just, like, gross. The freaking foul ball territory is, re- is comically large. It's stupid. It's just not a baseball team. Um, going- if the Mets brought that package in, hold on, A+. plus. Like, you get oh, professionals yeah. in here all on the same page. Bob Melvin goes into that clubhouse and straightens all these kids out that thinks that they're, they're better than everybody else. And you actually have competent people running the organization. I feel much more comfortable about yeah, that. He's a great manager, Melvin. Um, going back to the Padres real quick. Yeah, 66 and 49 on August 10th. And now they're 76 and 73. So, uh, yeah, 
That's um. Do the math there. What is that? That's ten and twenty-four, like you said. Oh, I'm a genius. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, definitely not good. There. Oh no. I'm, oh. Yeah. Okay. No, ten and twenty-four. Yeah. yeah. I. My brain is just otherworldly. Mm, yeah, you're a genius. You know, you kind of brought up the Vlad Jr. MVP thing. This is, this is quick. It's Shohei. Like, it's so Shohei, and it's not – I don't think it's going to be close. Um, I, I still think it's going to be close. I think it is Shohei, but I think it'll be close. Well, consider- not like – not like, these- like, I don't think Shohei is going to be uh, – Unanimous. No. I don't think he's going to be unanimous either, but I th- I think he's going to be close to unanimous. His offensive numbers are just not as impressive as they were earlier in the season. If you listen to some of these guys, though, talk like Passon and Heyman and Ken Rosenthal, who obviously have I'm pretty sure they have votes on the MVP. They're all like it's not even. They, they literally like came out and tweeted it's not even close at showing. I don't know. I, I think you might be surprised. Um, I mean, yeah, looking at Vlad right now, he's he's short of the RBIs for the Triple Crown, um, but I don't really think the writers – I don't think they care that much about RBIs anymore. I think that's kind of uh, an outdated stat to a lot of them. Um, yeah, that's BS. I like RBIs. But you got runs, hits, home runs, batting average on base, slugging, OPS, OPS plus, total bases. Vlad leads American League or Major League Baseball in all of those categories. So it's uh, his war 6.8. Like he's got a fantastic war number. Shohei's is 8.1, but Shohei pitches. I think it'll be a little closer than you think. You got to, uh, we got to tally up our picks from the NFL. Yeah. Well, um, not now for next week's episode, for next, next episode, mm-hmm. before we make more picks, we, we did our picks on TikTok. Go check out our TikTok page. It's in our, um, link tree, uh, where were the hardline sports talk on TikTok. We put our NFL picks there. Uh, I think we're going to continue to do that. Right. Yes. I like, that. we're going to continue yeah. to do that. We're going to ten- continue, you know, if, if just if we have a random sports thought or whatever, um, and we're not recording that day, then just go right on, make a quick little video. But yeah, TikTok's fun. I like TikTok. Yeah, definitely go hit us up on TikTok for sure. I think that's going to be it for this episode. That is short episode. Michael's uh, going. I don't to think. His... I don't think it was short. It was a little short. A little short. Know, we'll see. A little bit. Um. Yeah, I'm. I'm heading to sleep now. Yeah, and I'm gonna head. I'm going to head to Boston, go watch some Mets, Red Sox. Very excited. Mm-hmm. Um, we're getting right into it with the New York Yankees. This is it. This roller coaster season's coming to an end. Whether, you know, are they going to get in? Are they not? We'll see. Next nine and the next 11 games. There's 11 games left. So, got to get it done. This weekend, right? Against the Red Sox. In Fenway or home? Um, In Fenway. Okay. There we go. Yep. Going to the game tomorrow. Let's go, Yanks. Should be fun. Hopefully they win. Hell yeah. All right, so we will definitely talk to you guys next week. Uh, not the next week, this week, but later in the week. Mm-hmm. And, uh, please send us voicemails, questions. Our email will be put in the description. Uh, have a nice uh, couple of days here.